My hello, little ones. I'm trying an alternate recording method. This is actually my phone um, so that I don't have to get off of your classroom meet with you while I make your next assignment. One thing to discuss on a small level with Shakespeare is the naming. So Katerina is the name of our main character in Taming of the Shrew. But you'll notice as soon as Petruchio finds her and meets her, he keeps calling her Kate. I wanted to talk about power play. So one way that you can subtly, and even not so subtly, exert a little power over somebody is by how you call them their name. So for example, my first name is Kara. Not hard, four letters. Um, and no one really ever mispronounces it. They mishear me. Like when I call on takeout orders, they hear Carrie or Karen, um, Tara, Sarah, all kinds of fun things. But I had a professor once who, uh, the best way I can describe her is that she definitely had her um, accent coached out of her and she was over pronouncing certain things to compensate for her accent. She had a, a low Georgia accent, so like a real sudden twang. And she was trying to sound like this. I was very coached. Anyway, whatever on that note. She looked at me and said, Cara. Cara, what do you think for class discussion today? And I corrected her a few times. I said, Cara, my name's Cara. I try very hard with students to always ask how to pronounce their name. And I encourage you guys to always tell me if I'm doing it wrong. Because when you do that to somebody... It is a power move. It's a flex. Like my professor, for some reason, was flexing on me. I can only imagine because I am loud and I am frequently like the, the big hand raiser in the room. Like I am always in your class participation. I want to answer your questions. That can sometimes be overbearing. It can sometimes be the student that interrupts your thought or takes discussion to a place that you weren't expecting discussion to go. So as a teacher, I totally get the soft flex that she performed on me. But as a student, it was really like, why are you doing this to me? My That's not my name. Stop it. And it was kind of ironic because we were in a like an identities unit. So she kept like soft flexing on me by being like, Kara, what do you think, Kara? Like, stop. You make me want to not speak. So when Petruchio meets Kate and calls her Kate, instead of Catherine, or Katerina, or Cat even. He calls her Kate. It's definitely a power play on his part, trying to show her where she stocks up in his opinion. Also, Kate is a diminutive. Diminutive is a fancy word meaning smaller form or quaint form. So if your name is Joseph, like a diminutive would be Joey. Or Joe. Those are shorter names and they're usually also less formal names. So there's something to be said there for like the shorter, more informal version of your name. Now if you go up to somebody that you haven't met before and it says their name is Michael, you're not going to go, sup Mikey. You're going to wait for them to say that that's all right to do or, or some indication that it's all right to call them by a different name. If someone's name is William, you don't just assume you can call them Bill unless they go, hi, my name is Bill. So when he meets Katerina, um, he just starts calling her Kate. It's sort of putting her in her place. You have a small response related to naming and how you guys feel about this, especially because I, I've said to you since the beginning of the play, if you say her name is Katerina, Catherine, Kate, or Kat, it's all the same character. But there's only one Bianca. No one gives Bianca nicknames. So what does that mean for us? And what does that mean for her? And what are we supposed to do with that? Sorry for the very English teacher 20 questions game at the end there. But the idea is, are you interpreting something from how we are naming her? The fact that her identity gets put in all those different positions all the time. All right. See you guys.